hi everyone welcome back again to my channel and in today's tutorial we'll be dealing with how to dynamically change the font styles for the app okay so in many of the apps we might have noticed that they have an option of changing the font styles for the entire app okay and the font styles can be configured based on the user preferences some apps have that configuration which allows the user to choose the app styles based on their preferences and if you have an app which they gonna take that feature then think this tutorial is right for you and i have made use of google font styles and i have added four kinds of google font styles and if you click on that st particular styling from the drop down menu then you can see the about text widget is actually getting changed based on the option that you select okay uh, here i will be dynamically rendering the styles for that particular app and i have also added the concept of shared preferences in for storing the particular font styles locally so that when the user opens the app again he will be able to get the styling what he has just selected and left the app before closing it okay so let's get started with the coding part First, we need to add these two kinds of dependencies one is the google fonts and another is the shared preferences okay after adding these kinds of dependencies let us move on to the building of ui part okay inside the scaffold let me just have the body as of now i am not gonna have any app bar okay that's a simple ui okay inside the container let me just have or specify the width say the container before the child let me have the width which is the maximum width it could take followed by the child what i'm gonna give for that is the column because i want that a drop down button as well as the text to be placed in a column wise manner wherein in before the children we just let me specify the main axis element which is main axis alignment dot space evenly followed by the cross axis element as cross axis element dot center okay and the first children uh, for that column is the text which is a simple text you can provide and inside this style let me just and before that i have actually just defined the list of font styles that is the google font styles so uh, i'll be making use of these four kinds of google font styles where i have just wrapped them inside the list and this is a string which i gonna want to display in the drop down button okay and the initial index my index is uh, initial zero and the selected font that is uh, a string that you select from the drop down option initially let me provide with the uh, first one that is the index zero okay now let me provide the style for the text which is the font of my index so my index is actually zero so you will be getting uh, it's actually fonts i think right okay so as, as the my index is actually zero you'll be getting the first google font style okay you can specify the font size as well which is let me provide it as 50 and if you want you can provide font weight which is font 8.w of 500 okay so and you just need to just have this inside this font style i hope okay inside this font style you need to provide this font styles okay now let us just create the drop down menu okay after the text let me create a drop down menu it's actually a drop down button takes the string okay and the initial value for the drop down is the selected font 
followed by some styling for the drop down which is underline this is the container that takes the height as 2 and if you want to provide color then you can provide colors dot deep blue ascent deep orange ascent anything okay after that for styling that text you can provide text style followed by the color for the text this is for the items that is inside the drop down menu okay after styling if you want to provide the icon the icon what you want to provide for the drop down i am gonna give icon of icons dot arrow down this arrow down okay let me type it okay if you want to specify the icon size also you can specify since it is very much small okay and the elevation is another parameter you can just specify okay and now let us build the items the item is actually and we need to map the items which is font name dot map of This is a string which takes the value and which renders or which returns new drop down. Menu button, menu item, yeah. And this drop down menu item is also gonna return a string, okay. And the child is uh, widget that is the text widget okay which is new text of value and before this child let me just provide the value set the value as the new value after this we just need to just cast it to list okay for that let me I think it's not too list I need to provide right okay now let us just create the function that is on change whenever the user had changed then the new value would be updated for updating the UI we will be making use of set state and inside the set state we just uh, Make the index as the font name index of the new value. Okay, what we get as a result of on change event followed by we also need to change the selected font to the new font style. Okay, and the next thing what we need to change is for saving that. A selected font in the sad preferences let me create a custom function which is save my font wherein I will be passing the font index alone okay which is my index so let me just uh, build this function okay uh, said before the sad preferences is actually a sync function so let me make use of future and share to save my font of which takes the integer value and me just give it a sync and a string function let me create the instance for the sad preferences dot get instance of okay now let me just make use of that reference and set of the key what I am gonna give is index 
the value is also stored in the variable index okay we just need to add a wait over here okay just don't forget it since it is async function we need to wait till that saving is done okay and and like saving we just need to retrieve that back okay for that also we can just write another function which is get my name yes or get my font okay here we just no need to pass any parameter and instead of setting we just need to get get int which is an integer and just pass in the index that is the key okay if there is no entry in the database then you can just provide the index as zero okay and since we need to update the ui just need to set state i just need to write that inside the set state okay i think uh, just provide it with and i will be storing that in my index okay now have you actually saved the font index as well as i have written a function for getting the index now let me call this function in the init state so whenever the app gets initialized i will be actually checking whether there is any entry in the local data for in the key index if there is any entry then i will be just getting that and storing it in my index value or else i'll be storing the zero th uh, i'll be storing the zero value in the index okay and uh, i mean now rendering the ui that is the text style based on the my index value now let's check it out okay i just click on the styling then we can see that the above font is actually getting changed Say for example, I will change the font style now. Let me refresh the app, and now we can actually see that the last change, that is the last style, what we have chosen, is getting rendered instead of the uh, you know, uh, styling at the zeroth index. Okay, if I change it to the third, uh, okay, and if I refresh it, you can see that the third styling is actually getting appeared. Okay, that applies for the text style. So whenever you reach, so here refresh is equal to closing and opening the app again. So if you open the app for the next time, then you will be able to get the previous font style what you have stored. Okay, and it's pretty much it. And that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.